So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Priscilla, and I'm the Director of Admission for Dodge College. We are so excited to welcome you to our virtual session, How to Apply to Dodge College. The goal of this session is to learn more about applying to our film school and also give you an opportunity to ask us more questions. With that being said, I'd like to get started on a presentation. We will start the session with a quick presentation and then we will leave time for you for Q&A at the end. Please feel free to start putting your questions in the Q&A section. If you see a question that someone else has posted and you also want that answered, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Some questions will be answered live and others will be answered in the chat. We will do our best to get through as many questions as possible, um, but please bear with us. Let's go ahead and get started on our presentation. Okay, so how to apply to Dodge College. So again, I welcome myself as Priscilla. I'm also joined by some of my, the students on my staff. We have Luke, Neela, and a colleague of mine, Tiffany. So if you go ahead and start asking questions in the chat, they will be helping you guys out there. Um, a little session overview. So things that I'm gonna be going over today are an overview of Dodge College, our undergraduate programs, how to choose a major, and what are some questions to ask yourself when you're choosing a major. Um, a little bit about the Common App, the Creative Supplement, of course, some of our deadlines, and also give you guys tips for applying. So a little bit about Dutch College. We have about 1,500 students total. This encompasses 1,200 undergraduate students and three graduate, three uh, 300 graduate. I'm sorry. Um, we have 17 academic programs, eight undergraduate programs, and nine of those are graduate programs. And we are currently ranked as the number four film school by the Hollywood Reporter. Um, it's our third year in a row being ranked in the top five. So we are super excited and hopeful um, that we'll be able to stay up in the rankings over the next few years. Um, some of our undergraduate programs, so we offer a variety and they're all in different sections um, and I'll, I can answer questions about that as well, but we have animation and visual effects, broadcast journalism and documentary, creative producing, film and television production, film and media studies, public relations, advertising, entertainment marketing, writing for film and television, and screen acting. I know um, screen acting is a joint program, so if you are interested in screen acting, I hope you got to attend the How to Apply to the College of Performing Arts yesterday. Um, our colleagues over there also put on a presentation um, to give tips for applying for the College of Performing Arts. Um, choosing a major. So some questions that you should ask yourself when you're trying to pick which major is what are you most interested in? Is it writing? Is it directing? Is it producing? Do you like marketing? Do you like telling documentaries? Um, are you interested in animation? So make sure that you know, understand the program that you're applying for and also what kind of um, things that program entails. So what kind of classes that you take in that major um, and what are some of the um, jobs or the field of study that you're going to enter once you graduate from that program? Another question to ask is yourself is the amount of production or hands-on work that is in this program. So who owns the rights to the work that you create and how much work will you do in this program? So again, the difference between a BFA and a BA degree is that um, is how much hands-on you will have in the program. So these are questions that you want to ask yourself. Are you a person that likes, you know, a camera in your hand on day one? Um, or do you like more of the theoretical or um research part of that program. So those are questions you can ask yourself. Also, how is the program organized? I always recommend students to take a look at the course catalog and see what kind of courses are offered for that program. Um, a lot of times I'll speak to students and they'll say, oh, I'm applying for film and television production. Um, but when they tell me why they like that program, they're really explaining a different program, like producing, for example. So they like the business aspect, they like, um, you know, uh, fundraising or a lot of the business part of it, not so much the production area. So you really want to take a deep understanding on what you you prefer and what you like. Um, and that's what the program that you should be applying for. Um, more questions that you should ask yourself, and these are also questions that you should be asking the school as you're trying to decide what program you want to do. How is the student access to equipment? So as a freshman, am I able to check out cameras? Am I able to find places to shoot my films? Um, do students own the rights to their work? I know I mentioned that earlier, but I think that is important for you guys to understand. Will you have the free range to submit your films or projects that you're working on to film festivals, for example? Um, so that's a really great question to ask. How is the 
collaborate collaboration among majors. Um, this is a really important question because I think students are interested in multiple areas. So when I was going over the programs, if you thought to yourself, I kind of like a little bit of everything. Um, so you want to ask those questions. How much do I get to collaborate with the other programs and how much do I get to collaborate with students in other programs? Um, what kind of internships do students do and are they required? So some programs will require that you do an internship um, during your time in the program. How well are, are we connected to the industry? So are there places where we constantly get students to do internships? Um, are there a, a lot of um, agencies where our students are working? But these are really important questions. You are spending a lot of money um, for this degree, so we want to make sure that the outcomes also match up. Um, do you have any international travel programs specifically for film students? So yes, we have travel abroad programs, but are there travel courses specific for Dodge programs? These are questions that you should be asking. What is the budget for student projects? So do you do student uh, do this? Does a school help supplement student projects? What does that look like? What's the budget for those? Are there extra fees associated? So for lab fees, um, like I said, extra projects that you're working on, what are the fees associated? You wanna, you wanna look at that in addition to tuition. And can a student double major or minor within a film major? So I, like I said, I know a lot of you are interested in multiple programs. Is there a way for you to get a minor? Can you take some elective courses? Um, these are important questions that you can, you can ask us tonight. So when you apply to Chapman University and Dodge College, you're applying for both. And I'll explain that a little bit in depth, but first you're gonna submit a common application. So you visit commonapp.org, create an account, and you add Chapman as one of your colleges. Once you do that, you'll be able to fill out all the questions for the Common App, so very basic information. And then uh, questions will pop up that are specific to Chapman University. So you wanna make sure that you are really putting your best foot forward and telling us why you're a good fit, not just just for Dodge College, but also for Chapman University. You will be a student at the university, not just a film student, but you will be in general education classes. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're looking into the school. What are things, what are students clubs and organizations that you like? Um, what are different programs on campus that you would be interested in? Those are all things that you're gonna answer through the Common App. And then once you submit your Common App, you will gain access to your Chapman application status page within 24 to 48 hours. This is where you're going to submit your creative supplement. So those are your materials that Dodge College will be reviewing. Again, 24 to 48 hours to gain access to this. So please try not to wait to the last minute to submit. I'm sure you can guess how many students wait to the very last day or last hour to submit their Common App. But try to get your stuff a little ahead of time and so you're not rushing at the end um, and trying to click to submit along with everyone else that's going to be doing that. So make sure that you understand that there's that time to get the link to sum submit the rest of your materials. The creative supplement. So you're going to create the creative supplement and you will only submit materials for your first choice major. We are only asking you for to submit the materials that we are required to review. Please do not submit anything extra. Those will not be reviewed. So we don't want to waste your time. We don't want you to waste our time. We want to be fair and review everyone's materials that we are asking for. So some of the materials that are required are a Dodge College personal statement, a creative resume, and a major specific piece. Again, the creative resume, we're just asking you to list things that you've been involved in. Um, they can range from films that you've done. You know, you film YouTube videos with your friends. You're in yearbook. You know, you you're involved in choir, you uh, play the guitar on the side, anything creative, we really want to see that from you guys. Um, and it's just to give us an idea of, of things that you've done um, that can enhance your creative process and who you are as a filmmaker and a storyteller. Um, and then the major specifics piece will be distinct to the program you're applying to. So it's either an essay, a video, or a portfolio. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention and trying to figure out what was required for your major. If you have a second choice program, you are welcome to get the materials for that program prepared, but we are not asking for them right now. So if you want to have them ready and just hold off to the side in case we review you for your second choice, you're more than welcome to do that. I recommend doing that so it's less stressful for you later, but please do not submit those and you're not required to submit them at this point. Application deadlines. So deadlines are coming up rather quickly. So I'll go through the different um, deadlines and who's supposed to uh, sub submit by those deadlines. Early decision, 
if you remember, that's binding. So early decision are the students that are like, absolutely, yes, I love Chapman. I love Dodge College. My number one choice, yes, I'm submitting early decision. Early action, again, it's those students that, yes, they love Chapman. They know we're one of their top film schools. They would rather get their application decision quicker, so they're going to submit by early action. And then no matter what decision you pick, film and television production, everyone will submit by the number, November 1 deadline. We chose that deadline and the only reason is because we have so many applications that we would not have time to review ev everyone if we had them submit regular decisions. So anyone interested in film, film and television production, regardless if it's early decision, early action or regular, will need to submit by November 1. And then for all the other programs, if you're like, I'm still busy, I am absolutely interested, but I'm still getting my materials together, you're still welcome to apply by regular decision January 15th. A question that I get a lot is for students asking, you know, does it make a difference? Does it look like I'm not that interested if I apply regular decision or early action? Absolutely not. It's just a preference for you. Some students are quick and have their materials ready to go, and that's totally fine. Um, and some students don't. They take their time. They need a little bit more more guidance or a little bit more time um, to submit their materials and they submit by January 15th. We admit students in both polls, so don't worry. Don't think that's going to be a negative um, feedback from you guys. Whenever you have your materials ready to go, um, just make sure if it is film and television production, you're submitted by November 1st. Um, transfer students have two deadlines. Spring semester is October 15th, so that just passed a few days ago, um, and fall semester is February 15th. So anyone interested to transfer for next fall um, will submit by February 15th. Tips for applying. Make sure that you're following all directions carefully and you know your deadlines. So knowing your deadlines is huge, making sure you're submitting the correct materials, um, making sure that you are answering all the prompts, making sure that you don't answer the wrong prompt with the wrong answer. So there's a lot of tracking that you have to do. We know it's a very intense and um, busy time for you guys, but you wanna make sure that you're following all the directions really carefully. Title all your work and make sure you keep track of what you're submitting. I don't know how many times our you know, faculty and committee get something and it says um, video submission for USC or essay for NYU. So please make sure you title all your work, title Chapman essay, Chapman creative supplement, whatever you wanna do, but take your time and, and make sure that you're keeping track of everything you're submitting. Um, talk about your fit for Chapman and Dodge College. This is huge. Please remember that not only are we trying to make sure that you're a fit for Dodge College, we're also trying to make sure that you're a fit for Chapman University. So take your time, research our school, what are things that you like about us, both sides, um, and make sure that you're talking about both interests. Um, students should do the communication with us. I get a ton of phone calls and emails from moms, parents, counselors. That's all great. I understand that. I'm a mom as well, so I, I totally get that. But the students are really going to be the ones here. This is their future. This is their investment. Um, they should get used to communicating with us and their counselors. We want to be familiar with their names. We love getting emails after they've been admitted from somebody that we've worked with the entire process. So make sure that you're communicating with us as well. We want to make sure that we're I'm um, getting a feel for who you are and how interested in you, how interested in us you are. So please try to do the communication with us. And then you need to find what is unique about yourself and showcase that. We're looking for unique and creative storytellers. I don't know how many times I could tell people, I promise that we sub we admit people all the time with zero filmmaking experience. They love to tell stories. They shot something on their iPhone and they submitted it and it was so unique and different and we loved their essay. So don't be afraid that you maybe know students at school or other students that have gone in and they're just fantastic, um, you know, filmmakers. That's great. We admit those students too, but what we're really looking for is someone that can come take our school to the next level. So again, unique, creative. What are you know, you like comedy, you like drama, anything that you can bring that you feel is unique, that's what we really want to hear. Um, another thing that I see a lot is students submit essays, and I can tell maybe they were trying to say something and someone rewrote their essay to say what we wanted to hear. I promise that we want to hear from you. If it's a story that you think is really important, um, that's what we want to hear. If it's something unique to you and you're like, maybe they're not going to like that. I know everybody else wrote about something else. Um, please go with your gut feeling and whatever feels right to you. Um, we're really looking forward to hearing from 
you and how you are unique and how we can help you tell your story. Just as much as we want you guys to be a good fit for us, we want us to be a good fit for you. So please try to keep those things in mind um, as you're writing your essay or getting some feedback. Yes, it's good to have someone read your essay. I think it's really important when you've stared at the screen for so long, you kind of think you know what you're saying, um, but that should be for grammar and stuff like that. I, I definitely think if it's your story, it should be your story that you submit. Um, I'm going to open it up for questions at the end, and I'm also going to give a chance to let my colleagues introduce themselves. So give me one second and I'll get back to our screens. All right, I'll let them introduce themselves. We'll start with Tiffany first. Go ahead, Tiff. Hi, my name is Tiffany Arite, and um, I used to be a Dodge alum before I started working professionally at Chapman. I had a BFA in animation and visual effects, graduated in 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic, but um, it gave me a great opportunity to become a professional here. Uh, I used to work in the admissions department for Dodge College, but just recently I have switched roles over to main campus admissions right around there, so I wanted to be able to help answer any questions that the students aren't able to answer today. Thank you. Luke? Hi guys, I'm Luke. I am a senior writing for film and television major. I'm also double majoring in business administration with an emphasis in marketing over on main campus. Uh, so that's really exciting. Uh, additionally, I'm originally from San Diego, California, and I'm excited to be answering questions today. Thank you. Neela? Hi guys, I'm Neela. I'm a film and television production major with an emphasis in directing. Um, I'm from Laguna Beach and I'm also in an acapella group if you have any questions about those. Yay. Okay, we'll get started on some questions. So we have a ton in here, but I'll get through as many as I can. Um, Luke or Neela, do any of you guys have any internships? How did you guys get those and how did you hear about internships here on campus? Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm not currently interning, but I've had two internships uh, through Chapman, uh, through Dodge. Uh, one paid, one unpaid. I love them both. Uh, it was really awesome. I did, they're both summer internships. I did one through the T Television Academy Foundation uh, going into my junior year. I really enjoyed that. Uh, that was really uh, a lot thanks to uh, the Career Center here at Dodge. Um, really huge resource. Um, so like when you guys here, take advantage of it uh, just because of the fact that they'll like help you Know, read your resume, help you prepare with interviews. Uh, it's really awesome. They send like a blast email like every Monday with like a bunch of different internships and a bunch of different jobs you can apply for. So it's amazing. Uh, this past summer, I was interning for a comedian. So I got to do a lot of his marketing. Uh, that was really awesome. It was unpaid, but it was still a blast, especially because it was in person. Um, so yeah, it was really great. And I feel like the, uh, the Career Center has been, definitely been a huge resource uh, for finding a lot of internships. Sam, so, Mila? Don't have any internships. <laughs> it's okay. No worries. I'm just asking. Um, another question we have is what are we looking for in a directing um, emphasis major? Um, so I'm going to let Neela talk about her experience and a little bit about why she wanted directing. And then I'll answer on what we kind of look for in, in, in an application. Go ahead, Neela. Yeah. So I, me personally, I chose directing just because I loved working with actors and I did acting and I was a super big arts kid in high school. And I felt like directing was just the thing I felt like I was best at and the thing I was most passionate about. Um, in terms of what we're looking for in directors, I think just, you know, having a voice and and being a natural storyteller is a big thing that we talk about. Um, telling a story, how do I say this? Like, you don't have to, to tell a crazy extravagant story as long as it's something meaningful and it's something that you tell well. Um, I think that's the biggest thing that we're looking for, honestly. You don't have to do something that's crazy, crazy. Um, just something, something cool that you do well. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I would say Neela's absolutely right. So it doesn't need to be this extravagant film. You don't need to know even what you want to do in the future with directing this. If you want, like to tell amazing stories and you're a fantastic leader and you have some leadership skills, um, I think those are all really important as a director. Um, we are super collaborative school. So I would prefer someone who loves to collaborate on films and can manage a team um, over someone who's like, I've shot 50 things by myself and I do it all by myself and I shoot it and I write it and I edit it. 
Like let's bring some more people onto our team. And so that I think is really important, um, is a really important quality to as a director um, is learning to work on a team and also wanting to tell different stories. Doesn't need to be absolutely crazy, um, but just something that's unique is, is really helpful. Um, another question that we got is, is the Dodge Careers office open to freshmen? So does Luke or Neela want to answer that? Uh, yes, ab absolutely. Uh, if you want to get in there first week, uh, talk with uh, Joe Rosenberg, who runs uh, the Career Center. Absolutely, by all means. I, I do know some of my friends were like freshman year, they're like, we're, we're jumping in. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's open to you all the time, 24-7. It's also open to alumni, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Um, so that's something I really appreciate. Awesome. Um, a question that we got too is who reviews the creative supplements? Does all admission or only Dodge admissions and professors? Do they see the entire application? That's a great question. So I'll do my best to kind of explain that process for you guys. So at the same time where your common app is being reviewed by the office of admission, your creative supplement is being reviewed by us at Dodge. That pertains is the faculty in that program. So the writing faculty are reading the writing or reviewing the writing applications, the animation faculty are reviewing the animation um, applications. And so we're all reviewing at the same time. And then we come together as a committee and it's a joint decision on every application. So yes, I read every application. Yes, by the time you get your decision, your application has been read at least four to five times by different people in different in the both offices. So like I said, that's why it's important for you to take advantage of every opportunity you have to talk about your interest um, on both sides and also take advantage of every opportunity you have to tell us a different story we know there's um where you tell us like tell me about yourself we know we're going to ask you that questions a ton of times i'm sure a bunch of schools are um, but we really want you to take advantage of those areas and tell us what you like to be interested in what are things that are important to you what are clubs and organizations um what are family things that are important to you so any chance you get to tell us a little bit about yourself please make sure you take advantage and try to tell us a little bit different um but that would be my best advice is yes, they're both being reviewed at the same time. They're both being reviewed by different committees. Um, and then we come together to make a final decision. Um, we did have a question. I'm going to put this for Tiffany. So um, is there any collaboration between the animation department and let's say the screenwriting department? Totally great question. So at Dodge College, we really encourage cross collaboration between different majors. As of right now, there is no specific class that kind of puts you guys together in the same room to sort of do that. But I do know students who are currently working on their like um, APs or IPs, which is for film and television production and having animators or VFX artists hop on board, work alongside with them. So we really highly encourage that. There's just not currently a class um, put in place to establish that officially. But I do know that that's part of um, our Dodge's plan to really revamp and make sure that animation is being really highly incorporated into other aspects as well. Thank you. Um, another question that we got is, are we able to switch emphasis within film and television production? So my assumption is if you pick cinematography and you wanted to do editing after. Um, yes, so you're not binded to your emphasis that you're applying in right now. You actually don't officially declare your emphasis until the end of your sophomore year. Now there's a caveat to that. You can switch any emphasis that you would like, except for directing. Meaning if you came in as a cinematographer, you cannot just declare directing at the end of your sophomore year. You would have to reapply and submit materials. Um, and again, that's just the competitiveness of the program. And we have a ton of production. So if you can only imagine how many students would want to do directing, we would have no job, but just do productions all day long. So you want to make sure that you're taking your time and really understanding the emphasis that you are applying for. Um, don't just apply for something just to apply for it. Um, you want to make sure that you do like that. And if you come and you decide, hey, that's weird. I never thought about sound design. I actually really enjoy that. That is totally fine to move for, uh, move between the emphasis. So you will have a chance to do that. And again, you you actually declare your emphasis at the end of your sophomore year. Um, another question is, how thorough should descriptions be on the creative resume? I'm assuming it says creative portfolio, but I'm assuming creative resume. Um, Tiffany, do you want to answer that one? Sorry, you cut out really quick. What was- Oh, sorry. <laughs> how thorough should the descriptions be on the creative resume? Yes. So pretty thorough, but you do want to 
do maybe like one or two sentences, maybe even three max, just kind of describing what you did in that role or like what you did um, for like a creative piece for like animation, if, especially if you're going into that uh, area. So let's say you were in yearbook committee and you were in charge of taking all of the photographs and editing those, splicing those together. You would go ahead and describe your job roles all of the creative aspects to that portion. Um, let's say that you were in a photography class. You can also describe what kind of photographs you worked on, what kind of um, genres of photography you also worked in. Those are other aspects and areas as well. So it can really be um, as broad as possible, as long as it's relating back to like creativity, storytelling, um, all sorts of things like that. Awesome. Thank you. Another question that we've gotten a few about is about double majoring or minoring. Um, does Luke or Neela want to answer any of those? And I can jump in to clarify the process if you guys want to go first. Yeah, I can I can talk a little bit about it. It really depends on uh, what you're specifically looking at double majoring in or uh, double minoring. Uh, for me, for instance, I was already admitted as a writing for film and television student. Uh, so for a lot of the majors over our main campus, it's really easy. You just have to take a couple of classes uh, and then you can automatically add the major. Um, so that's over our main campus. For some of the, for the majors within Dodge, if you would like to add a double major, uh, while some of them are restricted, so like you couldn't do uh, film and television production and creative producing, but you could do like writing for film and television and animation. Um, so what you're going to have to do to apply into that is starting your sophomore year you can apply into that second major uh, through Dodge. You'll have to go through the application process again, uh, but then it then you'll uh, hear back uh, regarding that second uh, major. Yes, Neela just applied for a minor. So Neela, if you wanna talk about when you can apply for a minor and how that process looks like. Yeah, so I just applied into the business of entertainment minor at Dodge. For all the Dodge minors, you have to apply into them. Um, I. I'm pretty sure my deadline was October 1st to apply for spring semester. And we hear back before registration starts for spring semester. Um, and pretty much for the business of entertainment minor, my experience was just submitting a, a little essay about why you want to choose that minor and why that would be helpful for you and why you're a good fit for it. Um, but otherwise it was pretty easy. It's definitely nothing like um, applying to Dodge itself. Um, applying for the minors are pretty simple, and I I would hope that they're easy to get into because I really want to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Neela's correct. So you have to wait till the soft your the second semester of your freshman year. I'm sorry, second semester of your freshman year. If you were admitted, you would start that double major or minor in this fall semester of your sophomore year. So we do we require to see a full year's worth of grades. That's why we do it that way. Um, and that process is no longer with admission. So once you're a current student and you apply for a change of major, um, that's through our academic team here at Dodge. But my team is happy to walk you through the process and at least send you to the correct spaces so we can answer questions. Um, another question we have. So, okay, double majoring, we answered that. Um, uh, I'm sorry, there's a ton of them I'm trying to just go through. Can you describe what creative producing is? That's a great question. Can one of you guys describe what creative producing is and how it's different from the other programs? Anyone, go for it, yeah. Yeah, I could take this one. Uh, creative producing is essentially everything of the logistics behind production. Uh, they're, they're very intertwined with our film and television production students. They're still going to be on set. Actually, sometimes they're on set even more than our film and television production students, just because they're working on a lot of different productions at once. But they're the ones managing a lot of the scheduling, a lot of the budgeting, uh, making sure that all of the food is on set, making sure that all the actors are cast. They're the ones that are working with our writers on rewrites to make everything producible and able to be shot in the two weekends uh, for thesis or one weekend for the advanced productions. Uh, and they're kind of delving into a lot of the like business side of the, of the thing when it comes to agents and managers uh, and also kind of the, um, the, the financing and distribution of a, a completed project. Uh, so it is a really cool major. Uh, it's a little bit credit intensive, uh, but I think it's really awesome, especially because they do pair the producers and the directors up for a lot of the, uh, productions and so it is really nice where you have uh directors who have really big ideas and like really awesome creative scope 
uh, and then producers that have like all the plans and all the know-how to get it done and produced on time and under budget. Yeah, it's a super unique program. We're one of the only film schools that the creative producing program is on its own. For a lot of the other schools, it's part of the film and television production major. It's more like an emphasis. Um, so it's a very unique program, but that's why I say you should really do research on what you love doing in the filmmaking industry or about filmmaking, um, because then you get a chance to see that that's a, a special program and what you're, you're actually interested in. Um, so someone is asking, do different film majors work with other classes under different majors? So I'm assuming, what does the collaboration look like with you guys in other majors and maybe even students that are not in the film school? Either one of you can take that. I know Luke, you're involved with like improv and all sorts of other different student organizations. Yeah, so in terms of uh, like collaboration within classes, um, it's really awesome. I've, I've been like actually so lucky uh, I was actually last uh, year, I collaborated with my roommate, Matt, who is a directing emphasis. I wrote his advanced production, which is the junior level film. And it was really cool uh, just to go through like the specific writing process as being a writing major, but then writing something that ends up getting produced. Um, and there's a lot of classes that you take. Uh, like I took audio techniques, which is an elective that's open to every major. Um, and so really in that, uh, you get a lot of experience of being with a, a, a couple different majors. Uh, and they do have a lot of classes, like uh, some of my friends who are screen actors are taking uh, like uh, some screen acting classes where you're, they're specifically paired up with directing students. Uh, so it is really great where there's a lot of like that interconnectivity. Uh, in terms of uh, being like on set, uh, any student can be on set. I'm a writer, I'm on set all the time. I do a lot of sound stuff. Uh, additionally, I am in Father's Milk, which is the sketch comedy team here. So there's a lot of creative uh, endeavors and experiences that you can do outside of the, the school or outside of like uh, specifically Dodge as in and of itself. We also have Improv Inc., which is our improv team. We also have Primetime TV Club, which one of my like, good friends runs. Uh, it's a really cool club. They meet uh, like every week and throughout the course of a semester, they write a full season of a TV show. And then the next semester, they produce the pilot. Uh, and so they're like working around the clock. Uh, but there's a lot of great opportunities for students to get involved uh, in production if they're not a production major. Uh, and there's a lot of experience for uh, different majors within Dodge to collaborate alongside each other uh, in the classes and then outside of the classes as well. Awesome. Neela, what about you as a directing major? How do you have, how do you find people to be on your set? Or if you're working on a project, how do you say like, I like this cinematographer, or this is what I'm looking for. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I actually shot an independent film over the summer and I had a few incoming Chapman students reach out to me and just ask to be on my set and I let them and they were great. Um, I think just in for crew members, I think just dedication and willingness to work hard. Um, I had someone reach out to me and she was just asking to come and PA on set. And then by the end of it, she was my art director. So I think it's it's honestly just a willingness to reach out. And when you're there, give it your all. Um, you're so much more likely to be invited back to set. I I find myself kind of thinking back to sets I've been on and and you know, how the crew has worked together and, and how hard people worked and, you know, their attitudes. And that's kind of what I think about when I'm trying to crew for my sets. Um, but yeah, honestly, just, just ask and you probably can get on set. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, we have a few questions asking about diversity specifically in the film programs and at the film school. So I can answer specifics, meaning like actual statistics of diversity. And then if anybody wants to answer their experience of diversity, either films or students in their class or, you know, any programs you're involved with. Um, so last year with our admitted class for fall 2023, so last year, meaning this year, they just started, um, we had 49% of our students Caucasian and 51% of them were non-Caucasian. Um, I'm sure the the spread of where their background was um, can be, you know, we can look more into that, but those are the stats that I have pulled up right now. And someone also asked about GPA. So I'll talk about that right now since I have that up as well. Um, the average GPA for admitted students to Dodge last year was a 3.92. Again, that's the average. Doesn't mean we admitted people that are less or it doesn't mean that we admitted people that are higher. Um, that was just the average GPA of admitted students that came to Dodge last year. 
Okay, another question that we want to ask is, um, can somebody be interested in public relations, advertising, and entertainment marketing and not want to do entertainment? <laughs> Does anybody want to answer that? I think that's a tough one because it is a very um, cohesive and broad, I would say, curriculum. It's very robust, um, but there are different, I guess, like aspects in terms of like elective classes that you can kind of choose. So you do have some flexibility in terms of like what area you kind of want to go into. Um, if you are very much like, I don't know how I feel about this, I do want to say we have a new entertainment and business um minor which kind of is a joint program between the business school or joint minor between the business school and dodge specifically so if that's maybe something that you kind of want to look into but you're not 100 sure that might be an avenue or a pathway for you awesome luke or neela do you guys know anybody that's in that major and what they're interested in um the people in the major that i know are honestly just interested in um like I know one of my friends, Mila, she is a, she's a PR ad and entertainment marketing major, and she does a lot of social media stuff. So she like runs the so social media accounts for productions and she works on marketing for them, um, making marketing campaigns. Um, I would say that it's kind of, you know, it's kind of hard to, to major in something within Dodge and not really have an interest in entertainment marketing, um, especially if it's a kind of marketing-based major, Luke? Yeah, I know I have a lot of my friends over on main campus. Uh, one of them, uh, she's involved with, uh, I believe it's like strategic and corporate communications. Yes. Uh, but it's specifically like more of like the advertising and that kind of like lens uh, when it comes to communication. And it's less directly like oriented towards uh, entertainment. So if you're interested in advertising overall oh, or other aspects of like PR, uh, but not specifically in as it relates to the entertainment industry, that might be a major uh, to check out as well. Yeah, and that's a really good point, Luke. There, we have a, a lot of majors on main campus too. So if you want to have a conversation with your Chapman counselor, um, I think that's a good opportunity to talk. Again, what are you looking for? Taking a look at the course catalogs. Are those programs you're interested in? Are those classes you're interested in? But again, making sure that you um, understand what that program entails and is that something you're actually interested to, um, I think is really important. Um, a question for Neela and Luke that I think was important is how does Dodge support diverse voices? So what about the stories you like to tell? What about diversity in your films, in the classroom, um, in our curriculum? If you guys want to touch on that a little bit. Um, for me, I, I noticed a lot that the students here are very into making diverse films and um, amplifying diverse voices. Like I am right now, I'm the casting director for, um, it's a graduate project, but it's basically the whole, my whole job as a casting director is finding a diverse cast. And they're very, they want it to be very LGBTQ friendly. Um, any race, any ethnicity can apply, any gender. Um, you know, we, I think a big part of our school and like the people that go here, we are very open to casting, you know, different identities, different people, different types of people. Um, that's something I really like about it. You know, I'm brown, so it's, it's been great. Sam, Luke, did you want to add anything? Sorry, I didn't want to cut you off. No, yeah, I, I feel like it is really great that we like are so like dedicated and specifically having like a lot of diverse voices, especially when it comes to set uh, and like really like having like a huge like a variety of people from like a variety of different backgrounds, because uh, it does make the set environment like a lot like just more fun when like everyone has something that they can bring to the table. Awesome. I also want to add that one of our previous um, tour guides on uh, the Dodge side she was heavily involved in a, uh, her senior thesis and that was completely done. I think 90% of the dialogue was in Korean. So there was like um, closed captions on the bottom, like subtitles on the bottom. So that was something that like was like very new and everyone was like, oh my God, this is kind of amazing that we can kind of pull in different voices and aspects and cultural backgrounds. So I really wanted to highlight that as well. 
Thank you. Actually, Tiff, this is for you too. The next question was, if someone is interested in animation and visual effects, but doesn't necessarily have experience in animation and visual effects and more has like just design background, um, do you have any tips for them or recommendations um, for applying? Yes. So I was in the same boat when I applied for animation and visual effects. We did have slightly different um, application requirements. So I think there was a little bit more of a push for like any sort of creativity. And they have they have since um, kind of honed into different like specific verbiage and language for what you should submit or what they recommend that you should submit. Um, but my main thing is definitely showing any type of like character design or development that can be done on specific, like pen, paper, pencil, um, any sort of. I would say like movement in your pieces that can show different types of visual storytelling. Um, how can you express a story in one of your paintings or pieces? Uh, I would even say if you have like an iPad or if like one of your relatives have an iPad, if you download Procreate, I think there's like a free version that you can go on there. They do have a really small animation feature that you can kind of like work with. Um, you can go on YouTube, look at animation tutorials, kind of work through things like that. It doesn't have to look like a Hayao Miyazaki um, Studio Ghibli film. Even small little things here and there show our faculty readers, hey, they have potential in this. They've already shown interest in this. Um, let's go ahead and dig deeper into like who they are as a student and see how much more potential they have and how we can help them grow as well. So totally, if you're worried about having experience or like access to different sorts of like animating um, software, there are different workarounds around that. You can even do like a um, we used to have like those flip books where you would kind of draw each and every uh, frame and you would kind of like flip through them and they would kind of show an animation, little a short little animation. You can even do that and submit that as well. So really anything that can prove that you know what you're doing, or at least you kind of know what area you want to go into, as opposed to just applying for like a graphic design major, that is a completely different scope um, that I kind of want to make clear. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, Neela, someone is asking in the directing emphasis, does everyone get the opportunity to direct their films or is there a lot of competition? No, oh, you definitely get the opportunity to direct your films. Um, I Chapman is a very learn by doing approach. Um, so like for me, well, for all of the film and television production majors, especially directing emphases, um, you direct at least one film every single year, whether that be your intermediate production, advanced production, senior thesis, or just your intro to visual storytelling um, little projects your freshman year, you will absolutely have the opportunity to, to direct. And a, a, another big thing about um, the students here is that they're always creating. So I feel like even if, you know, you take your intermediate production the first semester of your sophomore year, your second semester, you can work on your own project and you can direct something on your own. And, you know, all your friends are willing to help you out and work on it with you and um, super collaborative. I think, you know, if I, you know, wrote up a script and I was like, I want to direct this, um, I just call one of my friends. He's a cinematographer. I call one of my other friends. She's a production designer. And, you know, you just get all your friends on set and you make something. Um, so yeah, long answer, but yes, you direct, you can direct as much or as little as you want and as little meaning you're obviously class projects, but um, if you want to direct more, you absolutely can. Thank you. Um, what about, I know we talked a little bit about collaboration, but can you guys talk about how you find people to collaborate with? Was it in the dorm? Was it in your classrooms? Was it throwing yourself out there like we've talked about. So why don't you guys talk about your experiences um, collaborating and how you find people to collaborate with? Yeah, um, so it, there's a lot of ways. I feel like the middle name of Dodge is really collaboration. Um, two more formal ways that you can find collaborators is we have two Facebook groups, uh, Chapman Film Connection and Chapman Casting Connection. Uh, one is like literally just people will post like, hey, I'm shooting this independent film or hey, I'm doing this class project. And I need these roles. Uh, does anyone like want to help? And then people can like type up there uh, and like share some work they've done. Uh, additionally, Chapman Casting Connections, the same deal, but just for actors and casting. Uh, additionally, like in less formal terms, uh, I feel like, yeah, freshman year was like huge, um, especially like having like people like on everyone on your floor will be from your school. 
So they might not be, you know, like for me, there weren't all writing for film and television majors, but you know, there's directing majors uh, like down the hall and like your, your roommate might be a, like a creative producer. And then it just starts to become like, Hey, I'm working on this project or, Oh, I have this idea. And people just start uh, snowballing and like helping out. Uh, and it's really cool just because like everyone is so like excited to just be there and help. Uh, and so everyone's always like there to contribute a helping hand um, for my independent that I wanted to shoot my sophomore year. I was like, I have no equipment and I have like a tightrope budget because I'm just funding it by myself. And so like all my friends were like, oh, I have a camera or like, oh, I have lighting equipment. And we started, we literally like the budget was like $200 and it was literally just the money that we had to feed everyone. Uh, and it was just because everyone was so excited to like get involved and help out. Thank you. Um, Neela, how accessible is equipment to students outside of class? So I know you guys mentioned working on projects in class and we know that we supply all of that, but what about access accessibility to equipment outside of class? So um, I was really surprised when I got here with the amount of stuff that people just have. Um, so like, for my, I shot an independent over the time. Like I said that before, um, but I I had so many friends on set that like kind of like what Luke said. Like this person has a camera. This person has lighting equipment, um, and people are so willing to share. Um, I feel like nobody is is really like, oh, you can't use my stuff. Like it's mine. They they're like, yes, please use my stuff. Um, and you know, obviously we have the gold room, but I'm pretty sure that that's limited to if you're for class projects. Um, and, you know, there's also rentals. Um, if you have the budget for it, I know a lot of different, you know, whether that be Chapman alumni that have started renting out equipment, you can um, find stuff online. There's a lot of different rental warehouses that you can rent from. Um, but yeah, there's so many places, so many places. Awesome. And yes, to clarify the gold room. So we do have equipment in there. Most of it is used because the priority is class projects or like your AP or your IP or your thesis. So we make sure that students that are working on those films get priority. But during um, inner term or summer is when it's kind of slower for productions here. So if you want to shoot something with your friends in the summer, you submit a request through our gold room. Um, and for the most part, that that's more when people kind of work on passion projects. Go ahead, Luke. An awesome loophole I found my sophomore year is I was enrolled in a cinematography class. And I so I had like access to the cinematography package for the cinematography class. And I was like, well, if I decided to shoot a side project while I had access to this equipment, <laughs> I'm able to do that. Uh, so that's a great thing. Just take advantage of the classes that you're taking. And if you have extra time to do stuff, go ahead and do it. Yes. <laughs> um, one of the questions that we got, and I, I can take this one, but if you guys want to jump on is what is Dodge looking for in the visual samples? So we're looking for creativity. Um, we get a ton of people who submit a lot of the same stories. I'm sure out of all the years we've been doing a similar prompt, um, you can imagine that we've seen a little bit about everything, but it's funny because it could be the same storyline but the way it was told was completely different. So like I said, if it's comedy, um, if it's super serious, so I, you know, we get watching the film and it sounds like it's a drama and it's super dramatic and it's like a donut. So it's just, it's being creative. And I, I don't want to give too many examples because that's the part that I love doing every year is when we get in the committee with everybody. And like I said, it's the same storyline, but they told it completely different. We are shocked. We're like, oh my gosh, we haven't seen something like that way before. So amazing. So like I said, don't worry about so much about the production of it. Um, Fancy equipment, amazing lighting. I mean, if you can be creative, that's even better, but that's not technically what we're looking for. We'd prefer a strong story, a unique story, Story, um, and something that's specific to you. We can also tell if it's something that you're just putting together because maybe we know that a lot of our films of students who got admitted are on YouTube. Trust me, we remember them too. So try to be unique. Don't copy. It worked for them and that's fantastic. Um, that should be more of a guide and more um, like support to give you to come up with your orange story. Um, but please don't try to copy those examples out there. I promise we want to hear from you um, and something unique that you can tell. So um, I, I took that one. If you guys want to add, go for it. Go ahead, Neela. Um, for me, I I I did watch all of those on YouTube. 
mine is also on YouTube. Hey. And it really scared me when I watched all of them because I thought, oh, these people, they're they're so much better than me. They they have all this cool equipment. Mine doesn't look like that. Um, and it scared me so much, but don't be scared. I think, you know, we can teach the technical stuff. You can teach someone how to hold a camera and how to light a scene, but you can't teach the creativity and the natural storytelling. And that's what we're looking for. Um, if you shoot it on your iPhone, completely fine. As long as you're telling a great story, that's all that matters. We did get a question about um, people in the industry that have visited classes. So if any of you guys want to give an example, yes, our infamous master classes, but also um, about people visiting classes in general. Anyone? Of I could, can look? <laughs> yeah, I could take this. So yeah, so uh the master classes yes obviously uh so amazing uh literally like every week we have like a different guest chloe Zhao is coming next week you know uh it, it's it's so cool how we have like a huge influx especially because in the spring semester they're like all of the nominees for the oscars and so you're literally just up close and personal with like the oscars and awards race uh but also we have like the distinguished artist program which is really cool uh, a variety of the weeks during uh, the semester, we have like industry guests who come in. Yeah, they do their master class, but they also spend like the day going to classes and like like hearing pitches and like talking to students. Uh, so Natasha Leon came in and sat on like our like, writing thesis class. And so we're all pitching our final ideas uh, for like we're, we're all all of us in the cohort are all uh, writing like our original pilot ideas. Uh, for TV and so she was just like giving us notes and it's like crazy that like Natasha Leone is giving notes on like stuff we're writing uh, so it's really cool when you have industry guests that yeah they come in they talk about themselves and everything that they're doing uh, and give insight into their process which is amazing but it's even so, so much cooler when they're coming in and they're like hearing what we have to say and the ideas that we're coming up with uh, it is just really awesome because it's so, so, some great advice go ahead Nila um, yeah, master classes are crazy. Um, Luke brought up Chloe Zhao. I got the lottery to get dinner with her on Friday. So Yay. that's the craziest thing that's ever happened in my entire life. Because <laughs> um, I couldn't make it to the master class and I was so upset. And I got an email saying, Oh, enter the lottery to be in the dinner with Chloe Zhao. And I submitted and I got it. Crazy. Anyways. <laughs> um, so yeah, master classes are super cool. Um, I'm taking an uh, introduction to set management class right now, and my teacher brings in every week an industry professional. So last week, we had a second AD that worked on Barbie. Oh, Crazy! Awesome. I saw the call sheet for Barbie, um, and it's really cool. They talk about their experiences. Um, it's it's also really nice to just talk to you know, random people that are working in the industry. And, you know, these like people that come for master classes, like obviously they're they're at the top. But, you know, sometimes you want to hear from people that are just working and they're just doing what they love. Um, and that's a great thing for this that my teacher brings in for this class. Um, so super cool. Um, we could ask questions. Um, and I know a lot of teachers do that. They have industry professional guests come in that, you know, they're just friends with or they've worked with before um, that you can that you can talk to and ask questions to. Yes, Luke, go ahead. Adding on to that, the the crazy thing about like 99% of the faculty, well, it's so our faculty are either required to be like having worked in the industry and like retired and have like years and years of experience, like tons of, tons of accolades. Their IMDb page like scrolls on for miles, uh, or they're currently working in the industry. So like I've had professors. So for like my like pre-production class uh, for like writing the pilot, um, like my professor was like the first AD on Westworld, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm a huge fan of Westworld, and like this guy is like the one scheduling everything. Uh, so it is it is like really cool where our industry like our our faculty are also industry professional guests, and so they like they'll bring in stuff uh like my another one of my professors was like one of the like the producers uh producers for uh 80 for brady so he was talking about like oh here's the dailies we had for 80 for brady and like you know it's just it's just cool when the, your professors are like doing stuff in the industry and like they'll come in at the end of the day and they're like oh, i just got off of set here's everything here's like a crazy story with this like crazy celebrity so it's just it's fun where you get like behind the scenes info because your faculty are involved in the industry 
Yes. Um, we have, I think, two or three questions that I can see that are talking about study abroad programs or travel courses available within the film school and just in general. Do any of you guys want to answer that? And I can help as well. Go ahead, Neela. Um, I don't know too much about study abroad. My One of my roommates, she is a broadcast journalism documentary major, and I have a lot of friends in that major that are planning on studying abroad next semester, and they're going to super cool places like Spain, New Zealand, unbelievable places. I'm like, I wish I did that, but the travel courses are the super cool things. Um, I think what is it this year there's a there's a travel course to Sundance um there's can there's um honestly there's stuff like that where you go to cool film festivals but there's also stuff where you just go like you maybe go to a country in Europe and you learn about the film industry there or you I don't know there's there's so many options but the the dodge ones I I find are the the coolest because you know it's it's in something that I love and you do it in a really cool place. Yeah, Luke, go ahead. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, like study abroad opportunities, which are really great that are specifically just like main campus style, like, hey, you're not going to be taking your Dodge classes now, but you're going to go off and they work with you to try to figure out semesters that that works where it's like, hey, you're not shooting your project this semester, go off and you know go to London for a semester and then come back and you'll be shooting your AP. Uh, and then we also have the Dodge specific ones as well. I'm actually signed up and going to the Sundance uh, Film Festival uh, um, travel course, which I'm really excited about. I had a bunch of friends who went to Greece uh, two summers ago and yep. they shot a bunch of short films based off Greek myths at the locations that the Greek myths were taking place at. Uh, so it is pretty cool how we have like a variety of like main campus oriented ones, but also like Dodge specific ones. Uh, so there's really something for everyone. Awesome. Um, I'm going to kind of wrap it up, but I saw like six or seven questions that are for both of you um, and I'll summarize them into one. Why did you choose Dodge or Chapman over any of the other schools? And if you could describe Dodge in one word, what would you say? Um, this is what I always say. Um, when I first was thinking about applying to Dodge, I didn't want to because it was so close to home. And I live in Laguna Beach, so it's like a 40 minute drive. And I was like, oh, I want to go far. I want to start a new life. Um, but then I visited and I was like, all right, I'm going to apply early decision. I, I have to go here. Um, I think the biggest thing that I loved was, you know, the learn by doing approach. I'm a very hands on learner. Um, and it just I think just being at Dodge, I was like, wow, this is so amazing. And then coming to Dodge. I learned how, like, like I know we're talking about collaboration so much, but it's so true. And people are so willing to teach you and everyone is so willing to learn. I was so scared coming in because I thought all these people that I'm going to school with are, you know, seasoned professionals, but you know, they're, they're just like you. And, and, you know, when people know more than you, they're so willing to help you learn. Um, and that's great. If one word, like, collaborative like <laughs> that's I feel like that's the best way to describe Dodge um yeah yeah thank you Luke yeah adding on to that two other words I used to describe Dodge and Chapman as a whole is supportive and flexible I really appreciate the amount of support that the faculty give to students but also that the students give to students there it's, it's like not a cutthroat environment at all which I love um I came in not having opened final draft or written a single script and like everyone was like, absolutely, I'll be able to help you. Like, like I'm saying, like my sketch comedy club, like we're always bouncing ideas off each other and like being supported and lifting each other up. Uh, in terms of flexibility, like I, there was certain schools I applied to and I was like, hey, could I do a business uh, major, but also do something in film? And they were like, absolutely not. There's no way you could do it. I came to Dodge and came to Chapman and they were like, yeah, absolutely. We'll like get both advisors talking. We can figure out how to work that with you uh, for a four-year plan and like they were able to do that and I think the amount of opportunities they're able to do here at like a smaller school is just like amazing and then also you have like great uh, industry guests that come in and also great opportunities here uh, and so that's why I really enjoy it and it's like such a super fun environment uh, and it's kind of sad that I'm a senior so but yeah I've, I've really enjoyed it here. Thank you. I'm also going to ask Tiffany, since she was an alum here and also loved it so much, she stood. So what did you love about Chapman? Um, why did you pick it? And then what's one word to describe it? 
Yes, I must have loved Chapman and Dodge to have come back willingly to work for them. <laughs> um, for me, what made my decision really easy is that I'm originally from Hawaii, so the right off the bat, the weather is just quite similar. So it wasn't a really big transition for me. I couldn't imagine myself going to um, Washington, even though I love Washington State. I can't do gray weather, snowy seasons all the time. So that's just completely like out of um, my range of like comfort, I would say. Um, I would also say that the animation program was really what drew me to this place. I grew up a lot on Studio Ghibli, um, Disney, of course. And I really felt like I could explore animation, but also get a really great liberal arts education on top of that, which was really, really um, something that I thought was very valuable and I guess not as normal for like other art institutions. In terms of like one word that I would describe Chapman would definitely be opportunity. So you have the opportunity to do a whole bunch of different things, whether that's get on to set, um, change your major into like, let's say like Dodge doesn't work out for you. You want to go into business? You can totally do that as long as you work with your academic advisor and still graduate on time if you talk to them early on enough. Um, on top of that, I would never have thought to get a job in higher education if I wasn't a tour guide for um, Dodge admissions at one point. So everything leads you to your next step in life. And we have a really great career center on top of that. So definitely opportunity is my word. All right. Thank you guys so much. Um, we know you have a ton of questions. I promise you we will get back to you. So we're, what we're going to do is download all the questions. And over the next few days, all of us on the panel and some people on my team will reach out and make sure that we get your questions answered. Thank you so much for attending tonight. We really appreciate it. Um, good luck with your applications. Remember to track everything, label everything and follow your deadlines. Um, and if you have any questions, our team's here to help. Thank you so much.